Okay, hi GC Brown, how are you? Hello, how are you? Doing great, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Nice to have you here. So we got a lot to talk about. You've had a pretty colorful life, it looks like. You've got a book coming out called Sniff, when I see the big poster behind you. And also a coffee company, which I see on your shirt, Up Cup Coffee, is that it? Yeah? That's correct, Up okay. Cup Coffee with a K. Okay. Uh, we'll get to both of those, but I want to just start a little bit from the beginning. Not not like you were born beginning, <laughs> but uh, according to your bio, it says that you were doing a lot of entrepreneurial stuff, real estate development, fixer-uppers. Uh, you had a nightclub business, software, flower company, sushi chain, all that stuff. And, and uh, left out the African diamond trade. I've African diamond before. trade. Was that blood yeah. diamonds? Uh, that's what the government thought. Investigated me for two years and it, it uh, was not. It never was. Uh, I had uh, everything was above board and done correctly. Okay, except that you forgot to pay your taxes. Well, the, yes, they uh, investigated me for a couple of years. In the, I was in Sierra Leone two years after the Civil War over there. Uh, bringing in, I was a real estate guy, ended up over there just by uh, mistake, uh, bad luck. And uh, a couple of years go by, I'm bringing in diamonds. They're investigating me, think that I'm bringing blood diamonds in. I was not at the end of a two year investigation, which I didn't know what was going, that was going on. They charged me with some uh, tax offenses in another country. I chose not to take the plea because of what the statute says, it's willfully evade, which I did not do. Um, I chose to fight them, and instead of the three-year plea, they gave me 20. I lost in trial, um, gave me 20, I served 16 for a very small amount of money, which is uh, crazy compared to, uh, if I'd have committed the crimes and I, I would have done them, I should have done anywhere, less than five years, uh, should have been the max, and the government uh, has a way of punishing you for not uh, agreeing with them, and I did 16. Wow. Yeah, never been in trouble, never had a speeding. I hadn't had a speeding ticket in 10 years. I've been self-employed since I was 18, 17, actually. Uh, same accountants for 10 years out of Coral Gables, Florida, living in Miami, uh, young guy. I probably ma I was making too much money in a city too big. I came from a, a small farm and did the self-employment, lived everywhere across the United States and landed in uh, beautiful South Florida so at, uh, in my 30s. So you must have been making millions. I was making uh, several several million a year. Aver I was averaging about two and a half million dollars a year yeah. from twenties into mid thirties, which was a lot from a farm. When growing up on a farm in the Midwest, it was a oh, well, yeah, uh, it was I, it was the life. And it uh, now I look back at it and it wasn't. It was just a uh, chaos. And could I have been better at the uh, taxes and better at uh, sh sure for, for certainly. Certainly, I, uh, there was no reason to be filing late or asking for extensions or late on. There should have been none of that. Just like I said, a young kid making too much money in a city that was uh, big with a lot of things to do. I never did the drugs and alcohol. I, I always tell people that I don't want that confused. I didn't get into that kind of stuff. I just was all over the place. So you did 16 years. That would have been federal prison, I assume. Correct. Uh, was, was it hard time in the sense like you know, we see on TV or was it country club or was it something in between? Well, I should have gone to the country club, but you can't go there with more than 10 years, with a sentence more than 10 years. So my crime fit the country club, my time did not. So I actually did the uh, the gang units. I started off in a gang unit in Texas, uh, eight different prisons, um, worked myself down to lower custody at the end and uh, came home. I did the last year in California at a, uh, a low security facility. It's it's camp, which is, club. they call it club fed. It's camp, then low, medium, medium high, and then of course the penitentiaries. Wow. So I didn't see the penitentiaries, but I did do the other ones and uh, it's what you see on TV. It's did definitely what you see. Did you have a family at that point? I did, I left with a uh, little Lily was uh, two years old. And yeah, she's now a sophomore at the uh, University of Central Florida. Gianna was seven and she is now graduated, well, a couple years now, 
from uh, a four-year degree from Florida State University. So you missed all of that, her growing up, both of them, yeah? I did. Well, I that's, did. That's got to be the hardest part, I think. That was the only hard part. I mean, the rest of it, your, your body just, your mind kind of adapts, and uh, I found things to do. I uh, picked up some new uh, life skills, and I uh, did everything I could with those. The missing the kids, the being away from them never left, and it, uh, it's still, that's the still the part that hurts today. Yeah, how bad. So you've got a book now. I looked on your bio. You've got several books already published, yeah? No, that's the uh, that's the Gregory Brown. Uh, that's why I went with G.C. Brown. There's a Gregory Brown out there oh. that's an uh, author, and he's published several. I did complete. Uh, I did uh, write one book and published it way back then, uh, 2017. I won the Benjamin Franklin Award for it up against 2,000 other authors. And at that point, I decided to tear the book off the shelf, get rid of the agent, the whole deal, start over. I turned that book into a series, a six book series. I, I wrote it just basically out of ego, just to see if I could do it because they said it was so hard and uh, kind of fell in love with it, with it at that point, finished that book, won that award. And about that time, I realized that the out of everything I've ever done in my life, I've never had the, the passion that uh, I do for writing. So I, like I said, I tore that book apart, turned it into a series, and then uh, wrote some other ones in between. The first one comes out uh, in like four days, five days, the first, November 1st, and that's Sniff, and that's part of a three book series. And then the other series that I wrote, that comes out March 1st, first book comes out March 1st, which is Taken by Storm. So the book Sniff, which we have the big poster behind you there, this is the first book in a series of three books, you said, right? Correct, Sniff, Smoke, Shoot. Okay, did you start this while you were in prison? Yes, uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I never wrote anything before prison. I wrote all these books. In, I, so there's, I left the streets um, involved with, the, at the same time I was doing, I had the flower company in Quito, Ecuador. I had the, uh, the uh, diamond company in Sierra Leone, Africa. I had a restaurant chain there in South Florida. I owned uh, two software companies out in Arizona and property from Florida to Hawaii. So that was all right when I left the streets three companies on three different continents. And uh, I get to federal prison, there's none of that. It's just uh, gray walls and defeat. There was nothing, you, there was nothing to do. So I, I went to my case manager and, uh, hey, what can I do? Uh, he scoffed and said, well, you could write a book. So I, what do I know about writing a book? So I left his office, uh, fast forward a couple months later, I'm in solitary confinement, uh, battling my, uh, appeals case, talk to the attorney. The attorney says, I get a legal call. What do you do all day long? Hey, listen, there is nothing to do. All I do is read, read, read. Why don't you write a book? That was the second. I don't know. I don't, why does everybody keep saying that? I know no idea how to write a book. So fast forward a couple more months. I get a, I'm still in solitary confinement. I get a USA Today. Uh, the cop slides from another inmate, passed it to me, slid it underneath the door front page of the USA Today, top 10 hardest things to do. Writing a book, uh, completing a novel was number three. I said, that's it. I picked up a pen and uh, I never looked back. By the title, it, the obvious is that this is about cocaine, is it? Well, no, it's not It's not really. It, it's a, there's a backstory where the guy, uh, he was a, a big banker. It's, obviously it's fiction. Uh, a banker, one of these big high finance guys, he's pulling in six, $8 million a year. He's married to, uh, for his income, he's married to the woman of his dreams. He's got the kid that he wants. He's got uh, life is great. Everything's great. Uh, markets crash. He comes home uh, at the same time. Uh, the markets are crashing. His wife is pronounced terminally ill. She's given a couple months to live. He loses it all, goes crazy, ends up getting hooked on heroin, uh, staying up around the clock, trying to fight this, trying to find a way for his wife to uh, to make it. Gets hooked on speed first. That turns to heroin. Heroin turns to robbing banks in the United States. Oh, okay. Yeah, So it's uh, but it takes you everywhere. You start off in the Middle East, you hit South America, you're back to uh, Cairo, it's uh, Dubai, uh, and lands in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Do you have all three books of the series written already? And just going to I do, they're not, book two, Smoke and Shoot, has not been edited yet. 
Um, so we will, we're not dropping book two until probably summertime of 25 uh, of next year. Um, so like I said, this, this first one sniffs release now. The first book in the other series is released March 1st, and then we'll come back, release second book of Sniff Smoke Shoot, and then the uh, double back and hit the second book of the uh, Mason Storm series. So they're doing it, uh, the same publisher, I came out of prison to a seven book publishing deal. This one's three, Sniff Smoke Shoot's obviously three, um, taken by, or, I'm sorry, the Mason Storm series is, it started off as a four book, I think we're gonna turn it into a six book series. Um, but yeah, we've got just a few minutes left. I want to make sure we get up cup coffee in. Now, before you say anything, why a coffee company? There are millions of coffee companies. It seems like and the competition must be incredible. Is this going to be like you're just going to sell the product or are you going to have brick and mortar like Starbucks? It's just the uh, product and it's not really a coffee. It's a functional mushroom coffee. Um, so they're pretty new to the market. Uh, just to give you an idea, last year in the United States alone, it was 95 billion was the coffee market, uh, regular coffee market. The uh, functional mushroom coffees was 2.3 billion. And that's expected to grow at a rate of six to 8% a year. So it's just mushroom, Coffee is just getting started. Uh, and that's the reason we went with that. I, I came out with the intentions of doing some sort of health shake, health drink, and then got out and realized what the market had turned to in 16 years, that it would take uh, millions of dollars and a bunch of time uh, just to get a something on those type of shelves. So I went with the uh, mushroom coffees, coffee, and we signed with the uh, largest distributor in the uh, in North America. So this is going to be an online business, right? No, it's uh, right now it's e-commerce. Our launch is uh, Black Friday. Okay. And we launch at diff 15 different uh, digital retailers. And then we're on the shelves, Target, Walmart, Kroger's, uh, Publix, all the uh, Whole Foods, Sprouts, all of that quarter one going into quarter two of uh, next year. And by quarter three, we're doing the uh, Costco uh, BJ's, Costco's BJ's Sam Club uh, end of quarter, quarter three, quarter four of next year. We're just starting the uh, contract stuff now. Oh, you're going to be in all the uh, all the great ones. Yeah, uh, we uh, were lucky enough to sign uh, to sign with U.S. merchants. And like I said, they're the largest in North America um, and they have shelf space everywhere. And uh, luckily we came through uh, Devin Blaine which is the same person I happened to get to you through and uh, wish they uh, they rolled out the red carpet for us. Love the story, love the uh, love the coffee, love the uh, what we're doing. This is not psychedelic mushrooms, right? No, 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 no. no. Lion's <laughs> made uh, the healthy, the healthy stuff, <laughs> the healthy stuff. OK, because I think yes. a lot of people are going to assume that. Yeah. And that's part of the uh, that's part of the breaking through into the industry. Now you get on the uh, both the coasts, East Coast, West Coast, everybody knows it's the guys in the middle that uh, assume psychedelics. So uh, obviously we have the uh, Blaine Group doing our PR uh, and uh, Nuance Media taking care of uh, some of the other stuff. And uh, they're, they're making sure that it gets out there that we're not a psychedelic mushroom company. Now, I've had mushroom tea before. How is this different? The same thing. It's just a coffee. Now, what made us get into the coffee? So I was mixing these uh, different uh, nutritional additives into my coffee because you just couldn't stand the taste of them. So I was mixing this stuff into my morning coffee anyway in the morning. And uh, my partner and Alex and I were going back on the phone back and forth on the phone, laughing and joking about some of the stuff that we were taking and how bad it tastes. And it just, you stayed, you're burping it up all day long. And we we're laughing and joking and putting in different things just to, to disguise the taste. And we came up with, hey, listen, we're at the same time, we were drinking mushroom coffee, but it tasted terrible. Mushroom coffee tastes like you licked the back of a wet tree. It's just uh, does not taste good. So when we got the idea that we wanted to do the mushroom coffee, we decided to start first with the coffee. So we hired a team of chemists and a coffee expert, 
to come up with a good tasting cup of coffee uh, and add our additives to it. And uh, what we ended up with was a, uh, a phenomenal cup of functional mushroom coffee that tastes uh, that tastes great. We're the only one that we're actually a brewed. Most of these uh, mushroom coffees, 99, there's only one other one. Out of all of them that are out there, there's only one other one that is a brewed one. Uh, the rest of them are instant and instant coffee is not even good. So you take and add some of this stuff to a already bad tasting cup of coffee. It's just, uh, it, it doesn't taste good. So we've, uh, we've conquered all of that, which is why we were able to sign some of the agreements that we've signed. We've got just about one minute left, but I did want to ask, what are the health benefits of this? Uh, the, you're going to get the, it's cognitive. There's some anti-aging chemical. It's shilajit, which has been around for 4,000 years. That's one of the additives. Uh, probiotics, it's got uh, the, obviously the lion's mane in there. Um, it's got the NAD plus. Uh, it's just a phenomenal, it's just a healthy, functional mushroom coffee. At minutes after you drink it, uh, you'll definitely feel the focus factor from it. Uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing. We'll be sure to, uh, Devin knows to get you out of bag already and a copy of the book. Well, I think on that, we're going to have to wind this down. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your story. Last question, do you have a website or websites that you want to give out? I do. So the books, uh, all the books and all of my personal stuff is uh, gcbrownbooks.com. GC for Gregory Claude, gcbrownbooks.com. And then the coffee is up cup, uh, up, just like it sounds, cup, and then coffee with a K, upcupcoffee.com. Okay, we'll put them both up on the screen so people yeah, can have them. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. Best of luck. Sounds like you're going to be busy for a while. I and I just had twins. I had twins that are 11 weeks old. So, oh, uh, congratulations. We're definitely busy, but I love it. Couldn't be happier. All right. Take care. Best of luck. Thank you. Talk soon.